Chapter 2 Life in the Pack 02 I looked up to see Noah and his idiot friends laughing as they drove away. I couldn't believe those idiots splashed me. Ugh, I swore I hated them. Knowing I wouldn't be able to turn back now, I continued my five minutes walk to school drenched in dirty water. I think the moon goddess today is Friday and the last day of school. So I won't have to spend another moment in the same building with those jackasses until summer break ends. Plus tomorrow is my 16th birthday, and I'll be able to meet my mate. I can't wait, I hope he's someone sweet and caring, and I really hope there's no one in this pack because all the guys here are idiots. The only downside to my birthday is that Noah and I share the same birthday. Because of that, he always steals my thunder with his outrageous parties he forces me to go to because his rank is higher. I also heard Archangel Michael is coming back tomorrow because it's Noah's birthday and he's of the age where he will meet his mate. I swear I hated Noah to my very core. For someone that's an angel, he sure acts like a demon. I refuse to allow him to ruin my birthday tomorrow. Because I would find my mate, hopefully, and be happy, even though I had to attend his stupid party so he could search for his mate, but why do I have to go? It's not like he and I are gonna be mates. That is just not possible, never, ever. We are mortal enemies. You see. Mates are like what humans would call a soul mate, all supernatural creatures have one. Your mate is supposed to be kind and loving, and they will protect you, and they will want no one else but you and vice versa, or at least that are what the elder said, but I don't care. I just want my mate. The sound of the first bell brought me out of my thoughts as I entered the schoolyard. I could see people staring at me, but I just ignored them. I could also see the idiots who splashed me laughing their heads off like it was some funny joke. I opened the doors of the school and walked into the hallway ignoring the stares and whispers, trying to get to my locker for the fresh suit of clothes that I always kept in there. Seeing as this wasn't the first time something like this had happened. As I placed my books that I would need for the class as well as the clothes in my bag, I heard someone yell, Why the fuck are your clothes wet? I sighed, knowing it was Aquarius because that girl's mouth knows no boundaries. Language, Alana scolded while giving her a slap on the back of her head. Ouch that hurts Lana, Aquarius whined. Well you should know better than to be shouting profanities like that so openly at school. Alana replied. Aquarius walked over to me, pouting while mumbling incoherent words under her breath. I just shook my head at the two. They are as crazy as can be. Hey cat, sorry I couldn't pick you up this morning. Mom and Dad got back late last night and I woke up late this morning by the time I passed your house you were already gone, she apologized. It's cool, besides I had already decided I was gonna walk this morning. I told her. Let me guess Noah and his goons, she said, motioning to my drenched state. Yup, I replied, popping the P. Gigantesco mano y stomp. She chanted. And then we heard a car alarm go off, and an announcement was made. Then Noah ran past us out the door, asking who destroyed his baby. We all walked to the bathroom laughing. Lana was such an angel. I cleaned myself up and changed my clothes, and then we headed to class. I didn't have any class with Lana, Freya, or Harley today, but we all had the same lunch time. Merlin and I had math in the morning, so I knew I'd see him when I got there, and Aquarius and I had art class in the second period, so all in all, today won't be that bad.